Nobody expected Pakistan to rewrite the map of Asia. But that's exactly what's happening right now. With a single mega corridor costing $62 billion, nearly a fifth of the country's GDP, they're fusing together new highways, a deep sea port, and a high-speed railway that could slash cross-country travel and unleash $18 billion a year in fresh trade. But this isn't just about concrete and steel. It's about vaulting Pakistan from oil dependency to regional power broker and forging China's back door to the Arabian Sea, igniting geopolitical rivalries and local unrest along the way. Here's what Pakistan just shocked the world by building and why the true consequences are only beginning to unfold. Steel rails cut across the plains and mountains of Pakistan, stretching 1,872 kilometers from Karachi to Peshawar. This is the ML1 railway upgrade, the backbone of the China-Pakistan economic corridor. For decades, battered tracks and outdated signals kept freight crawling at barely 40 kilometers per hour. Now, engineers are tearing up the old line, laying new standard gauge track and installing digital signaling systems designed to push freight speeds up to 120 kilometers per hour. The target, slash Karachi to Peshawar rail time from two days to less than 20 hours and move cargo seamlessly from factory floors to the Arabian Sea. But speed comes at a price. The project's original $6 billion budget has already ballooned by 12%, driven by inflation, currency swings, and the sheer complexity of relaying track through flood-prone valleys and dense urban sprawl. By mid-2025, only 40% of the realignment and signaling work is finished. Finance officers warn that interest payments on CPE EC-linked loans are now rising faster than the national health budget, and the pressure to deliver on time is intense. Chief Rail Engineer Imran Qureshi walks the new line daily, checking ballast overseeing tunnel reinforcements, and troubleshooting software glitches in the signaling network. He calls the ML1 the artery that will keep Pakistan's economy alive. Every kilometer completed brings the country closer to a future where containers roll from China's border straight to deep water ports without a single bottleneck. But delays and overruns threaten to turn this promise into a fiscal headache. For now, the race against the 2028 deadline continues, track by track. Towering cranes line the 1,200-meter key at Gwadar, where the Arabian Sea meets Pakistan's boldest maritime gamble. Cargo throughput, once negligible, is now ramping up. 300,000 containers a year in the first phase, with plans to push that figure to 2 million. Gwadar's free trade zone and new berths are designed to draw $4 billion in foreign investment and create 20,000 jobs, promising to turn this fishing town into a global shipping hub. But the race for prosperity carries a heavy ecological and social cost. Satellite surveys confirm the loss of 265 hectares of mangroves since construction began, an area the size of 370 football fields, stripped away by dredging and land reclamation. These tangled forests once sheltered fish nurseries and shielded the coast from storms. Their disappearance has hit local fishermen hard, with many reporting a sharp drop in catch and rising competition from industrial trawlers. On the streets, discontent simmers. In December 2021, thousands joined the Hakdo Gwadar movement, led by Maulana Hidayat Ur Rehman. Their demands, jobs for locals, protection of fishing rights, and an end to what they call economic exclusion. Sit-ins and port blockades forced government negotiators to the table, but many protesters say promised reforms have stalled. Security checkpoints and tight naval controls still shape daily life, making access to beaches and markets unpredictable. For planners, Gwadar remains the linchpin of Pakistan's maritime future. For many Baloch residents, it's a test of whether growth can arrive without erasing the coast's fragile lifelines. Six lanes of fresh asphalt now cut a straight line from Karachi's port district to the industrial sprawl of Lahore. 1,500 kilometers of expressway engineered to change how Pakistan moves. For long-haul truckers like Asif Malik, 
the difference is more than just smooth pavement. On the old highway, a single run from Karachi to Lahore meant 18 hours dodging potholes, waiting at overloaded toll booths, and crawling through city bottlenecks. Today, smart tolling systems scan license plates at highway speed, and the drive can be done in 12. That six-hour gain isn't just about convenience. It's a lifeline for refrigerated goods, urgent medical supplies, and export shipments racing to meet global deadlines. Highway Authority Chief Farzana Bashir calls it the country's economic backbone. She points to the numbers. Logistics costs cut by nearly 30%, with corridor real estate values jumping by $6 billion since construction began. For every kilometer opened, new service plazas, fuel stops, and repair garages spring up, each one a job source for local communities. The motorway's scale is hard to overstate. Stretched end-to-end, -end, it's two-thirds the length of the UK's entire motorway network. Freight studies show that the motorway now carries the bulk of Pakistan's north-south cargo, freeing up secondary roads for local traffic and slashing accident rates along the old Grand Trunk Road. For manufacturers, the payoff is clear. Faster deliveries, lower costs, and a bigger share of regional trade. For drivers like Asif, it's the difference between dreading the next journey and planning for a future on the open road. A concrete wall rises 272 meters above the Indus Valley, dwarfing the villages that once hugged its banks. This is the Diamer Basha Dam, Pakistan's most ambitious hydro project and one of the largest of its kind in South Asia. The reservoir behind it will swallow 272 square kilometers of land, holding back nearly 10 billion cubic meters of water. For scale, that's more than 20 times the volume of all the reservoirs in Los Angeles, though still just over a 20th of Lake Tahoe's vast basin. The promise is immense, 4,500 megawatts of clean power and enough irrigation to green a million hectares of farmland downstream. But the cost goes beyond dollars. More than 35,000 people are being uprooted from ancestral homes, their villages marked for submersion. WAPDA engineers point to seismic reinforcements and spillway tunnels, 60% already excavated, as proof the dam can withstand Himalayan earthquakes and glacial floods. Yet, as bulldozers clear ancient forests and wildlife corridors vanish under rising water, local farmers voice a quieter loss. The erasure of entire valleys, cultures, and habitats that no compensation can replace. The dam stands as both a monument to progress and a warning of what's left behind. Rush hour on the Lahore Orange Line. Metro feels like the city's heartbeat, fast, crowded, and unpredictable. Every morning, more than 180,000 riders swipe smart cards at the turnstiles, hoping for a seat on the 27-kilometer track that snakes through 26 stations. For young commuters like Sarah, a university student, the difference is life-changing. What used to be a two-hour slog by bus now takes less than half the time. She says the Metro lets her study more, work part-time, and still make it home before dark. Metro managers point to a 15% jump in urban productivity since the line opened in 2020, and the system supports 10,000 daily jobs, from drivers to maintenance crews. But there's a catch. Fares have crept up, and packed carriages during peak hours test the patience of even the most seasoned riders. For city planners, the Orange Line is proof that big infrastructure can reshape daily life. For riders like Sarah, it's a promise that only holds if the trains keep running and stay affordable. In Islamabad, the finance ministry's analysts stare at a ledger that grows heavier by the month. Pakistan's external debt, once manageable, now carries an interest bill that will eclipse the entire national health budget by the year 2028. That means more rupees go to creditors than to hospitals, clinics, or vaccines. The lion's share is owed to Chinese banks, tied to the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor and the ML1 rail upgrade. Every cost overrun, every delay on the tracks or at the dam site adds to the tab. The IMF's latest debt sustainability report warns that, on current trends, 
interest payments will swallow up nearly half of all government spending in just a few years. Ratings agencies have already downgraded Pakistan's outlook, citing the risk that infrastructure dreams could tip the country into a fiscal tailspin. The Asian Development Bank is now in talks to co-finance the stalled rail upgrade, but there's a $2 billion gap and no easy answers. For the fiscal watchdogs, the question isn't just whether the projects will pay off, it's whether the country can afford to finish them at all. The China-Pakistan Economic Corridor represents nearly 18% of Pakistan's GDP, with $62 billion invested in rail, road, port, and energy projects since 2015. These builds have cut travel times. Karachi to Lahore now takes 12 instead of 18 hours, and promised to generate $18 billion in annual trade by 2030. Gwadar Port's expansion, the Diamar Basha Dam, and the Lahore Orange Line Metro have created over 170,000 jobs and improved daily life for millions. Yet, 35,000 people have been displaced for dam construction. 265 hectares of mangroves have been lost, and Pakistan's debt to Chinese banks has reached $20 billion. Interest payments are projected to surpass the national health budget by 2028. Some project details, such as full repayment schedules and environmental impact studies, remain undisclosed. As satellite images confirm the rapid pace of construction, Pakistan stands at a crossroads. These mega-projects could secure energy and trade for generations, or deepen financial and social strains. The outcome will depend on choices made in the years ahead as the world watches.